It's Real Fit Radio with B and J dot L O U. If you're a first time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. Hello, everybody. Our goal is to inspire, impact, and empower our listeners through open conversation. And we hope that we're able to do that today. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the meat and potatoes of this podcast. Let's do it. We are talking about fighting for your joy. But I was very intentional with using the word fight for your joy because that's exactly what it is last week i think i mentioned it to you and we ended up talking about something else and then it came up again to me this week because it is a day-to-day fight some people say i choose to be happy you can choose to be happy and other stuff comes into play and you're like wait a minute (laughs) i was positive i was moving in peace it wasn't supposed to happen this way we talked about it or i was saying it you are one text message phone call instagram scroll post read however you want to say it it can change everything so i'm trying to implement it more because when you just kind of get up and start your day, I'm learning even now because I just would get up even being a parent when your kids are little, you're on their schedule. So you get up and you start marching to the beat of their drum, whether you're preparing something, getting them off to school or you know getting them fed, whatever it is, you wake up and start immediately catering to someone else. And that's what I did for so long. So for me now that they're older at 18 and 20, even though we have things that we're working on together and conversations that we're having, all that stuff, they're still pretty much self-sufficient. So I'm having to be more intentional when I wake up and begin to move around. I have to make sure that I do like a self check. That's the first part of me fighting for my joy. Just with the climate right now, even more so than before. Some people have routines of getting up and going to work, working out. But even in those routines, there are these small interruptions that can come change your whole mental disposition. Your spirit is like, what is going on in your interaction with someone at the gym? If you take a phone call and route to work, there are all these little things that are happening. And sometimes they can't be avoided. Today happened for us randomly with the whole camera thing. Oh, yeah, man. I forgot all about that. Not to leave you guys out, we were going to shoot some things this morning. So we had equipment. We go to location. It's our son, Lou, and I. It's a secluded area. But people walk over there sometimes, and other people may know to go and film there. But as we parked and got out, this guy's coming towards us, and Lou is holding the gimbal. It's a piece of equipment. We're in the process of moving towards where we're going to actually start to film. I won't even say he looked a little off. I try not to prejudge, but he was moving pretty fast. But he had like a, a handkerchief that you would put on your head over your bandana around his mouth. And he it kind of dropped and he's like, don't film me. Don't film me. Cut the camera off. So <laughs> I, immediately I'm like, what? I didn't say it. Because I'm in this process. That's why we're talking about this. Literally in my mind, it was really like, what the hell? Uh, Lou didn't say anything. Josiah just kind of looked and whatever. And he still kept talking. Thanks. Yeah, man. He's having a conversation. I didn't even know we had a car because as he got closer up on us, he looked grungy. Josiah said he thought that he might have been homeless, but he put keys in this car. But as he got to the car door was like weirdos and he's like mumbling and stuff. And so now I understand this is something I'm constantly working on not to take things personally. However, I have a problem when someone makes a statement and I feel like, hey, that's not me, I automatically am ready to defend or refute it. And it's not always necessary. It's a process. But I wanted to say, what are you talking about? Why would we jump out and start filming you? I wanted to immediately go into explanation, refute, all that. But that takes me into a whole nother place emotionally. There was no need for me to do that. And at that moment, I wasn't fighting for my joy. (laughs) I decided I'm going to give it up because I'm about to let you know (laughs) you're not going to make this assumption that he's filming you and it's very defensive. So in my transparency, that's where I'm at with it. So that was just something I could say small. But yeah, that happened. So fighting for your joy. Are there moments that you find yourself where you're just like you're having these issues or situations that are happening? Moments where you're like, I didn't choose to fight for it. I gave it right up. (laughs) I just gave it up. Yeah. 
I tend to have the same situations like anybody else that's living and trying to be happy and live each day with fulfillment, enjoying their heart without having an attitude. But I find it difficult to do it without preparing my mind mentally. I think we've both been doing that a lot more as of late. Reading books, you have your affirmations now, listening to praise music. Everything to get the mind situated for what's about to happen throughout the day because it's inevitable. There's no way you're going to go through your whole day without having something if you allow it to change your mindset or have you like go from one side of the spectrum via happy to feeling some type of way about something. And the reason why I say inevitable, and I don't mean to be negative because you can do it, but you have to be mentally prepped for it because you have social media. We stay in L.A. people. We can hop in our car, drive to the stop sign, and it can be some dumbass that'll just run through the stop sign. Mm hmm. Or, you know, you at a traffic light and somebody just switches lanes and does something crazy. And it's like, did you just see this dude? Like, what the fuck was he? Mm -hmm. So it can be the heat. <laughs> I know people that get mad because it's hot outside. I'm from Texas. So we used to have issues where it'd be so hot. And some people, you know, they don't have AC in their car and they just trying to get to point A to point B. And you can do something like that in traffic and it can be a murder. Because somebody is just that angry. I don't know what it is, but yeah, there's a plethora of things that can occur while you're on your daily journey, just trying to get things done for yourself. My thing for myself is I definitely try to prepare my mind for the junk that's going to come my way, but I'm already working the muscle that I need to work in order for me to repel it. So it doesn't affect me in the way that it would if I didn't do it, because there's no way you're going to avoid it all. I think we do a great job of steering clear of toxic people. So that's not one of the bigger ones for myself. But I am sure that it's other people out here in the world that might have somebody that you deal with at work that's like that. Or you may have a best friend or a family member that does it. And you got to think about it, too. And I've especially been reading this book that you recommended to me, uh, Things You Say to Yourself. And in there, you don't realize how many people or how much they affect you psychologically over time. And you get so used to it happening to the point where you've built up an immune system for it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it grants you joy because you have an immunity to it. It just means that you just deal with it. Mm -hmm. But you still don't recognize the fact that it does so much to you. You don't even realize that you're being dry to somebody that don't even deserve it. They all happy go looking. You cool. But it's all on your aura that something occurred. Like, I remember I would get phone calls in the past. I'll be cool before I get on the phone. And then after I got off, I'm cool. But you can tell instantly that something has been stripped away. Like, I'll be exhausted mm -hmm. from what just transpired over that five, 10 minute, sometimes 30 minute conversation. So it's imperative for you to recognize these things when they come your way so that you know how much time to lend to it, if any, if that matters. So I think I touched on all of the events that could steal your joy outside of being fired or something like that. I'm just talking about the basis of what we deal with on a daily basis. And you started out with talking about them. I just expounded upon them by giving you examples of how that can mentally tear you apart and take the joy away from you. You'll just be walking around like a robot. It's not that you're mad and it's not that you're happy either. You just kind of going through the motions and that's not a good way to live life because that's not what we're here or meant to do. I think the biggest thing you could do for yourself is work the hell out of that mental muscle and surround yourself with as much positive reinforcement as possible in order for you to repel the things that we just said that can ruin your day in a matter of minutes. I'm very spiritual and uh, it's so interesting. Even in you talking, I kept hearing put on the whole armor of God. You read the Bible, the Ephesians about putting on the whole armor of God. When it says put on the whole armor and I'm talking about fighting, you're not putting no armor on unless you go into battle. Mm -hmm. And I just thought about that right now. I'm like, wow, I'm having an aha moment right here. Even from things through music, the battle's not yours. When you were just saying it right now, you have to be so so intentional and ready for the fight because like you said it's coming i'm not gonna give it to you though mm -hmm. you have to fight me 
And I'm still going to walk away with something because I'm not completely overlooking that you won't feel these things. If you go into a job where somebody gets on your nerves or you work oh under goodness. a supervisor that just, oh my goodness, like what? You just pretty much are going through the motions. Like you said, like oh, another freaking day in here. I already know how he or she is, you know, or my coworker, they didn't do their part and we have a presentation or I have to make sure I pick up the slack. So that type of stuff, that's going to happen. I think the part that for me, when I'm saying fight, for is the preparation especially when you know those things in advance mm -hmm. like if i know you're a jerk you know this person is totally on some bs they don't mean me any good or this is going to be drama how can i function in it because sometimes you can't change an immediate situation but you can change your perspective or you can make up your mind nah that ain't what's gonna happen for me today those situations for me and I, i'll be transparent specifically with family I think those are really hard for a lot of us when you have family that you deal with and it's a perpetuated cycle sometimes and you are bracing yourself because you know. And if there are elders or it's levels of respect that you extend, I think that's where that fight comes in because at some point you have to decide you're not taking that from me like that. That's what's not going to happen. And there's no disrespect, but maybe you won't get as much time with me on the phone. Maybe I don't answer the phone call at all. Maybe I don't allow you to have the conversations or interactions with me that leave me feeling all icky like that mm. or, or frustrated or upset. That's the fight. If the fight is not, I'm going to go back and forth with you in opposition. The fight is taking a stance saying, nope, <laughs> phone's ringing. Not today. No, nah, I'm not giving any space to that today. I'm keeping my joy. And for some people, it's like, but I'm going to have to answer it at some point. Or I'm going to have to see my grandma, my grandpa, whoever it is. I'm going to have to run into my supervisor at some point. Yeah, you will. But my position in that, the perspective is you're not taking none of that from me. I've worked in jobs before where it was just, oh, my goodness. But what I told myself for those particular things was, one, the financial means that I get from this job allow me to move in purpose and have the financial means in this area to do what I need to do or what I love to do. So the level of disrespect is sometimes it's not what someone is saying directly. It's that you just know, like, you're not even doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I don't even know how you a supervisor like. Really? That's the stuff I think where we have to be like, I'm not going to even focus on that. For whatever reason, you are the supervisor and we're going to carry out these tasks for the next whatever your shift is. I'm going to give you what, what you're asking for, like in the four agreements. I'm not going to take this personally because some stuff I find I make it personal. And that is a part of me learning. That's a part of my fight, too. I'm not going to take this personal. I'm not going to make this about me. I'm going to make it about me getting this job done so that I can get the money that I need to handle all this stuff over here mm -hmm. for now. And also, this is temporary because for some of us, the fight is you need to start working on an exit strategy because some people don't like stuff, but they're complacent. You're not fighting. You're just existing. You're just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not good. <sighs> I'm just in this. I hate when this happens, but it's going to happen and I'm just going to stay in it. And like you say, it's Monday. It's like, no, let's start making a plan. Like, what can we do to not have to experience this? I understand this may be what it is right now, but it doesn't have to be like this forever. How can I start positioning myself? And when you start doing that kind of stuff, there's a joy that starts happening because you got something to look forward to. Like, who oh, I'm doing this now, but I'm working a plan. I'm sure you felt that way when you were making your move from Houston to California, like, Ooh, <laughs> I'm about to get up out of here. And it probably became even more apparent the closer it got to you going. It's like, I'm so happy I'm about to get up out of here because oh, y'all yeah. weren't speaking my language. I knew that. I knew that I needed to make some moves, but now it's just slapping me in the face. It's time to go. Shit, I had a fight and a half before I left. Right. So I'm saying those types of things. <laughs> Physical but fight and a half. <laughs> right. But wasn't it something inside of you that felt it just hit different when you knew you was making your way up out of there? Oh, yeah. It's almost like whatever was happening before was intensified. Right. But wasn't it something in you where it felt like this is temporary because I'm out of here? It's almost yeah, like you jump smile. in a car and be like, <laughs> but in a couple of days. I'm putting so much distance between me and this place. That's a part of the fight. And also you fueling joy because these are little moments you need to have them to make it through the day another thing we touched only a little bit on it but that's a huge thing 
That's freaking social media, man. Oh, yeah. That's that I, shit will... my mother did not allow us to watch regular TV. We were allowed to watch TV on Thursday together. Other than that, it was game night, family discussions. We went roller skating. She was just really big on you will not be a veggie head. That's what she called it. You're sitting in front of the TV, <laughs> right in your brain. And so that was her way. So I've never been one to watch the news or watch a lot of TV. We did, however, go to Blockbuster for all my old schools because Blockbusters don't even exist anymore. And she would <laughs> rent so many movies and we watch them together. I'm a huge movie buff. But as far as like people like you didn't watch the news, like the news, that's not something I'm even accustomed to doing. However, I understand why she did that now, because social media is the news. If you pick up your phone, you are probably a scroll away from some BS or something that can change your whole mindset. You just keep on scrolling. You're going to run into something or don't hit the comment section like you do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh you always see somebody that say something that just irks me i gotta hold your thumbs back don't say nothing i just feel like that particular thing you have to be so strategic and so intentional because it's a really good tool for a lot of things so what i find is my feed is so tailored to assist me in the fight I don't have anybody in my timeline that is not pushing motivation. I get to see food, wine, beautiful places where people have vacation, motivational, inspirational speakers, investment people, all the things that can feed me. I have to go into the search engine and look for the garbage. So then I know I didn't fight. I just surrendered. I want to be a part of some mess today because I left my timeline which was filled with food and the ambiance of beautiful restaurants. And, oh, wow, where is that view? Where are they at? Oh, that's Greece. Beautiful. It's a bathtub right in the middle of the water. Earn your leisure. Oh, they're talking about investments. All this stuff that's like intentionally put in place to just feed me. Ah, I'm going to go search and don't leave. I need some drama in my life. <laughs> what? This is one of those days you just went to the drama. You just on some BS. You were on the hunt. You didn't want your joy today. You just surrendered. So that is something else I think is really big on the fight. Fight in which you feed yourself, in your perspective, who you place yourself around, who you allow in your personal space, who you allow to come and interact with you or dump on you because people will dump. And I think dumping is good because sometimes you need to be the ear or the shoulder for someone to cry on and vice versa. Sometimes you need to have somebody in your life. And we're so fortunate if you do that you can call and say, look, it's just been one of those days. I'm just and it's like, well, what happened? And they are listening and they are not only listening. I like an active listener. You ever talk to somebody, you tell them something and and it's like, what? Dang. Just pray. I'm going to pray for you. They don't even pray. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like you can tell when somebody is really like there for it. They're there to actively listen and say, well, how did that make you feel? Well, what are your thoughts on that now? What are you going to do? Is there (laughs) anything I can do? You know what I mean? It's active. Those are key things that I not only listen for, I actually give to my circle. So the social media people, situations don't leave the house late and you got a speed to get somewhere and think that you might not happen to cut somebody off and they blowing their horn at you and gave you the bird or they driving on the side of you you could be proactive there leave early Mm. (laughs) you know don't say "Ah, i can get there and then you get out and it was an accident or traffic is uh, heavier than what you expected now you rushing and i'm sure it's somebody else out there that's rushing and if you guys happen to cross each other's paths, it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> so be intentional with that. Be proactive with that. Those are the type of fight for your joy I'm talking about. All that just doesn't happen. This is stuff that you are signing up for. You are saying, OK, I'm in this thing to win in the best case scenario, because what looks like a win to one person may not necessarily be a win to someone else. If somebody curses you out and you didn't get to curse them out back, somebody might say that was not a win. Oh, I'm still mad. But if you put yourself in a place where it's like, okay, that happened. So as a result of that, 
I probably won't be here that much longer. I find joy in being proactive from things that happen like that. Won't get me like that again. Oh, you had your fill today. You went in. But know this, buddy. When I don't come back from lunch next week, the joke's on you. No, don't do that. (laughs) In all honesty, I would do something like that probably. It's not the best way. But that's how I'm fighting for my joy. Your fight may not look the same as my fight. But if you disrespect me in such a way and I can't because I just know it's not the time or the place and it's really an unfair fight because you are the supervisor, I'm going to have to figure out another way to address that or make it to where it doesn't happen again. And this is just a little gem that I learned years ago. When you are fired from a job, they don't give you two weeks notice. They don't call you in two weeks before and tell you, hey, not working out. We're just letting you know two weeks from now, we're going to let you go on the 13th. That's going to be your last day. You can work that whole shift. You'll be paid. It's unfortunate, but this is what's happening. No, you usually get let go that day. You called in the office or they may call you from home and tell you not to come into work. So in all fairness, I like to extend the same courtesy. Unless I feel like this has been a place that I'm leaving on good terms. And I really have enjoyed working for the company. They've been good to me and I've done 110% as an employee for them. I've done what they hired me to do. I feel like, you know, I want to extend on that courtesy. However, if you've been acting a fool the whole time and I've had to have my positive affirmations on every morning, I'm like two seconds away from letting you have it. And I'm like having to go in between the paycheck and cursing you out or whatever it is. Know this. I I am making an exit strategy and I definitely will not be given a two weeks notice whenever that other opportunity opens up, be it I find another place that I want to go and work for another company. I'm out. If they tell me, can you start next week? I can. And I may give myself a couple of days off before I start. Might use up all my sick time and everything because I'm entitled to it, especially if you've been treating me jacked up. And I think that's a form of me fighting for my joy, too, because I'm getting myself in a place of positivity <laughs> to go into the next place. Yeah, I'm going to make this work. Oh, but um, yeah. <laughs> you don't She's going to so? be a clown and not with these job <laughs> tactics. <laughs> That's a huge portion of where people spend their time at work. Yeah, that's true. There's people fighting for their lives at work, on their way to work, at work, and when they leave. Some people are at work more than they're with their family. If the situation there, the workplace situation is stealing your joy, if the people in there are stealing your joy, you got to fight for it. Well, I can sum it up for you guys in the analogy that I want to bring to the table because she said the whole theme is fighting. To go back to the point you made about at some point, I'm going to have to get on the phone with this person or at some point when I go to work, I'm going to have to see this annoying supervisor. I like to use boxing as my analogy. So when you go into the first round, you usually are filling out your opponent. You're trying to see what their tendencies are, what they like to do in certain situations. So to simplify it as much as possible, let's say finding out in the first round, you know your opponent likes to throw jab, jab, cross, or two right hand punches and then a left. You go back to your corner. You now have the knowledge that this guy is going to throw two right hand punches and a lift so it is up to you to make an adjustment when you go back in there to not get hit with two rights and a left hand punch because you know it's coming so i'm saying that to say with the phone call to the grandmother or going to a relative's house that you know always have the same issues or the job you know exactly what's coming you need to make an adjustment on how you can deal with this because you know it's inevitable you're gonna see them so you have to make an adjustment to not get hit as hard as possible so in the terms of the phone, instead of giving them 10 minutes, give them five. What if you're scared, though? Not to cut you off. I'm just thinking this because this could be anybody. When you said like the phone, what if you know that jab is coming? But what if you're afraid that what you do in response to that jab is going to just offset everything, especially with family? It's going to make it unbearable. If I don't answer the call, I better do it now because if I wait too long, it's going to be really bad when I finally do. If I say no to lending the money or if I don't show up like they know I can You ever been a responsible one in your family? They know that I have it or they know that I could do it. And if I say no, mm, it's going to be worse. They're going to be mad. It's already going to be a problem. Maybe I should just do it. 
Okay, well, my question to you, whoever is feeling like that is, do you like how you feel doing what you already been doing? No. Do you, do you like the after sure effect? And nobody likes when you do what's best for you most times in the world. I'm not saying everybody is like this, but most cases, let's just be honest here. A lot of people in the world are selfish. And the moment you make a decision that's best for you and it doesn't do anything for them, you're going to get a blowback. Mm. So no matter what you do in that particular situation, think this before you start saying, well, I'm going to just go do what I always done. Do you like how you feel after you've done what you've done for whoever this person is that you're fearful of? Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. And then secondly, keep in mind what I just said about most people being selfish and the moment you do what's best for you, it's going to piss them off. People are going to do things that always suit them or as, if they can get something out of it, they're going to bleed you dry. And sometimes they don't even intentionally do it. And some people do. But if you don't like what that feels like, I think you're just going to have to build up some courage in that situation because courage doesn't mean that you're not scared. It just means that you're scared and you are still willing to go through or whatever the end game is. So I still encourage you to take a leap of faith and do something to save the joy that you want to have. You know that that 30 minute call is going to drain you. If you did this all the time and you knew the result was the exact same. And every time you got off that phone, you didn't have anything to give back to yourself. Is that worth doing the next 10, 15, 20 years? Or is it worth making an adjustment, doing something else? I guarantee you this. No boxer likes getting knocked out. If he or she knew that opponent was going to throw a jab straight to the face on the very next punch they was going to do. And it was going to be a knockout punch. Are you going to leave your face there? Knowing that they going to throw that? No, you wouldn't. You move out the way. You make an adjustment. You counterpunch. So your counterpunch for in real life would be, okay, I'm going to cut this short 30 minutes to 10 minutes. I'm not going to give you this money this time because I got stuff I want to do. And even if I want to scratch my ass with it, that's what I wanted <laughs> to do with it. The other point I wanted to make before I lose it, I know you said you have a clean social media slate that's being proactive. Everything about that or leaving for work or leaving to get to a destination on time. So you leave early. Those are all, all proactive. What I like to say in the box in terms for that is I like to allude that to like a prize fighter not taking on every fight they only fight people who's worth fighting meaning purse money like how floyd mayweather picked his opponents based on how it was going to do in a box office why am i going to fight you and it is going to make me look crazy as a business person nobody wins in this just reiterating because this is my part of this is summarizing everything that's being said being proactive with things that you don't have to deal with like that annoying guy who's at the job that's not necessarily a supervisor you don't have to see this person you know that person gets there at a certain time or something like that beat them there or take a different route to your desk or whatever job you have to avoid as much interaction with that person as possible that's being proactive that's choosing not to take on a battle that you don't have to take on if that makes sense yeah, you know, pick and choose your battles. Yeah. And if you want something different, you got to do something different. Don't go insane, literally. Well, no, I'm alluding that to if every time the perpetuated cycle is you call me, I answer the phone, you ask for money, I give you money. I see you, we argue, I'm frustrated, you leave, we see each other again, you say you're sorry, and I'm just making these things up, but it's a perpetuated cycle. So in order for that to break, I need to do something different. I know what's coming. I'm going to have to do something different here because if not, the same thing is going to happen. And there was one thing since you alluded to fighting terminology, I thought about feed the bite. Sometimes the fighting for your joy is me being transparent. I just don't have the mental capacity for this today. And I think that exposes people too. It does. Because too often... I believe people that are when they say check on your strong friend, when you're the strong person or you're the listener or you're the dependable, responsible one or whatever situation it is, people get very comfortable with you being just that. But if you should ever not be what everyone is accustomed to you being. And I would say that comes out more so for me in transparency, like I don't have the mental capacity to entertain this conversation today. When you hear how selfish some people are, really, 
what's wrong with you? Well, if I'm a go, cause I can't eat, listen to your problems cause I got my own. It might shock you into, I will never, <laughs> I will never be there for you like that again. And that may need to happen. That's an uncomfortable feeling, but fighting is uncomfortable. He just wants to fight. Unless you're a fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I think even fighters are like, I'm, it's still a profession, but I'm sure there's some people that are like, I'm taking this fight, but ooh, I got to prepare for it. Cause I don't want this dude to get the best of me. Yeah, and also some things are unexpected and that's where the whole proactive thing comes into play you can't prepare for everything but you can be in the best condition that you could possibly be in any event that something does come off that you wasn't ready for you already prepared yourself for it mm-hmm. so i to prepare myself mentally spiritually and the proactive part and the proactive part is me having an idea, like you said, I know how this goes. Let me not react to this or position myself to be a recipient of what I know is going to happen. Mm, exactly. Let me be proactive because I know what you're going to do. I'm going to do this instead. I'm not going to even show up over here. Or I'm not going to answer that call right now because I'm just, no. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this in preparation for that. I just think there's no right or wrong way in all of this. The overall message here is just decide to fight for your joy. Don't surrender it. Don't just exist in the funk of everything. Or like you said, I'm, I'm just here. I'm just here so I don't get fine. Because <laughs> in that, there's no, you don't have your joy in that. You surrender. So I say today, fight. Fight for your joy. Whatever that looks like for you, it doesn't have to look like what we said, just start planning and strategically setting yourself up to have joy in these situations. What does joy look like for you? It may not look like it to somebody else, but in your mind, it's like, hmm, that felt different because I made a plan. Hmm, that hit different because I'm only taking one call a week as opposed to you talking to me every day when I get off work. You know, I'm in route home. So I only talk to you once a week or twice a week. Nobody goes cold turkey from the thirst in one night. All right, Blade. It doesn't have to be that. <laughs> Blade reference. Now we're just being silly. But yeah, you know, nobody goes cold turkey from the thirst in one night. <laughs> Blade is like one of one of my favorite movies. But I just hope that this is an inspiration to someone or turns a light on for you where it's like, you know what? I don't have to feel this way. And I'm not talking about Because I thought about this today, too. There are some people that have chemical imbalances or struggle with uh, depression and things like that. That's a whole nother thing. There's medication. I'm not even qualified for that. No, we touch some bases on people who doesn't have. I'm talking about in my transparency throughout this conversation, things where you like that person, that thing, that scroll. And you put yourself under scrutiny. I don't even go into the whole body image thing. But for uh, for my ladies out there. Sometimes you look and it might be not even a status. It's like I'm at this age in my life and I should have this. Look what this person has. You start comparing yourself to somebody on Instagram. They're married. I'm not. Her body looks amazing and she had a kid and my body is still not where I want it to be after having a kid. Look at the house she's in. You know, the relationship looks great. Her kids are great. Look at the car they're driving. All that stuff. Social media will have you going nuts. Don't do it to yourself. Figure out what those things are and fight to change them. Fight to change your perspective. Fight for your joy. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want to keep this conversation going, or you have a suggested topic, you can shoot us an email uh, at realfitradio at gmail.com. Our podcast drops every Monday. You can catch a snippet to our latest podcast on our Instagram at realfitradio. If you're not following us, you definitely should be. As always, we hope this inspired, impacted, or empowered someone. Until next time.